Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel and welcome back to Perdition's Mouth Abyssal Rift and episode 2. Just before we get into episode 2 proper there is a minor error. Now as it turned out I didn't make a mistake but I would have done if I hadn't been very lucky. If you recall Alasabal ended up with two action points she was coming off the board and she was going to sprint and she went one two now i wanted to boost that movement because otherwise eliza would have had real trouble getting past her so what i did was i looked at the cards in my hand first to boost movement and then i remembered that i hadn't pulled the response card because you get a response card for sprint so i looked at the sprint card i got a plus two and went woohoo fantastic moved her up to now, the problem with that is nothing. That was fine. Except it was obvious from the way that I went through it that um, I would have done something wrong if I had to. Just to explain what I mean there is if, if I hadn't got that plus two on the, on the response card, say I'd got a zero, I'd have obviously then started playing one of the cards in my hand to boost my movement. You can't do that. Once you flip over a response card, that is it. You can't commit any other cards. So I was lucky that it was a plus two, because otherwise I would have made an error and committed a movement card. What you've got to do is you've got to make that decision to commit movement cards or attack cards or special cards before you flip over a response card. As I say, we were lucky because I got plus two on the response card, so I didn't commit anything after after it because I didn't have to. So on the Stone of Destiny, I think it's Sprint, Defend and Bash, where you actually pull a response card. So what I've got to remember is when I do that, I've got to make all my decisions about committing cards before I flip over that response card. So that is something to remember for me. So apologies for that because it came across in the video that I could play the cards out of my hand whenever you can't, only before the response card. So thanks to Didier off BGG who pointed that out. As I say, we didn't actually make the error, but it was more through luck than judgment, I'm afraid. So having cleared that up, let us start to move on with the game proper. I won't go across to any of the hero sheets because nothing much has changed. We're all at the same health and everything. Um, we haven't pulled any new cards. We all have old cards. We've committed a few. For example, Tyra's committed one, I think. She's only got three cards in her hand. And Eliza has committed a couple and she's down to three cards in her hand. But no new ones. Alathabal hasn't committed any cards at all as yet, so everything is pretty much the same. The only major change is that teleportation has gone out of the game because Eliza used it last round, and it's such a powerful spell that you can only use it once per level. So, because not much has changed, let's get straight into the hero phase. And here we are at the hero phase, so let's move all these pegs around so we know that everybody has a turn to take. In Abyssal Rift, what it is, is anybody can take a turn in any order. So anybody can go first, second, third, doesn't matter. There's no going clockwise around the table or any of that. Anybody can go whenever they like just decide between yourselves i've got to decide between myself and i've decided that eliza is going to go first so what's she going to do let's get over to the stone of destiny and go through the mantra she's got to move at least one and we don't want a rest so we're going to go go past rest that's going to cost us one action point now we've got aim shot and bash so we do want to go here, and we're going to have to go to Aimed Shot. Why? Well, Bash is for melee characters, Aimed Shot is for ranged characters, Eliza is ranged. What does Aimed Shot give us? Well, first of all, it gives us plus one combat, which is great, because Eliza has a base combat of zero. So that'll put her up to plus one. Then we've got this movement symbol here. Now, this is a little odd, 
what happens on aimed shot is once you've done your attack you can move one bonus square but that's it you cannot play any extra cards to get extra movement you are stuck at one bonus square also that one bonus movement cannot be used to say open an unlocked door it has to be used to move a square and that is it so that is aimed shot so she's got five in her action point pool one two she's down to three in her action point pool and what is she going to do well she's obviously going to attack because it's aimed shot so she's going to spin around on the same square and she's going to try and kill the acolyte what is she going to commit out of her hand well she's going to use elvish dagger again for three so she gets plus one from aim shot plus three is four that's an attack of four the acolyte has a defense of one so when it gets to pull a response card now it needs a plus three or better as mentioned the response cards generally the even out at plus two so we're going to take a bit of a chance we're not going to commit anything else we're not going to commit ghostly helper for example we're just going to say we've got some good odds there there are some plus three cards in the response deck but i think there's only a couple and it's a nice thick deck we haven't lost any victims or anything yet so we've got none of those plus sixes and plus fours and all the rest of it in there so we're going to take a chance additionally um, we've still got Alathabal and we've still got Tyra and if she does miss then those two will have to kill the Acolyte. As it stands we're going to go for it with Eliza. She's got an attack of four. This guy has got a defense of one and he has to pull a response card and he pulls whoop, a plus one. So it's four versus two. We win. We put a wound onto the Acolyte and kill it because it's only got one hit point brilliant goes into the dead pool with its mate and because we managed to inflict a wound we get elvish dagger back so it's eliza who's doing all the killing just before we finish with eliza she's obviously got that plus one bonus square movement so she's just going to move up here just diagonally across from the door she's okay there we do have this sort of arrow slit thing here but she cannot be hit just to show you this is I'll just use these just to it's difficult to show actually with the target lock um, because of all the moving around but those are the squares that he's sort of covering with his blowpipe yep yeah. You cannot see the middle of this square you have to see the middle of the square so it cannot see eliza so we're fine leaving her there because what we've got to do is obviously we've got to get down here and to the exit to win so let's just move her a bit nearer the door that is it for eliza and her go so we will put her peg facing inwards who is going to go next welcome back and our next player is going to be tyra and she has got a action point pool of five she's not going to defend so she's going to go one two and she's going to spend two of her action points to go on to charge so that means she gets to make a movement and then she gets to attack so are we going to commit any cards yes we are but she's not going to commit cards alazabal is going to commit cards now even though she's diagonal from her she is in range so she can aid her without any penalties so what is she going to give her she's going to give her gasoline and grease now because these have got movement symbols on them it means she also gets the aid of the numbers they didn't have movement symbols on as per Alathabal's special ability these would just give her two each but we do actually get five off them because of the movement symbols so she discards those in order to aid her friend Tyra 
So Tyra had three action points left. She gets another five, that is eight. So she's got eight action points to use on movement. So one, two, three, and then she uses an action point to open the door. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight. And she is facing that guard. So she's two spots away from the guard, but that doesn't matter because she has got a range of one to two. So she can hit the guard. And that's what she's going to do because she has finished her movement portion and now she is going to hit the guard. So let's have a look. Tyra has a combat of four as it stands at the moment, which is pretty good. Let's have a look at the guard because we haven't fought a guard before. Here's the guard and the guard has a defense of two. So as it stands, it is four versus two. Are we going to commit anything? I rather think that we are. We're going to commit headbutt. So this is fine. We're now in the combat portion of Bash. So we can commit combat cards. So that is three. So that will give her a total of seven. Versus the cult, the sort of guard. So which is two, so it needs a plus five or better. I don't even think there's a plus five in the deck, but we'll flick it over anyway. And in fact, we got a minus one, so it was a question of overkill, really. <laughs> we would have succeeded without Headbutt. But let's make sure. So Headbutt gets discarded. And we inflict a wound onto the guard. Now, the guard does have two health, so we do not kill it. So we're just gonna use one of these wound tokens. and We'll put that there, just behind the guard. So we know, actually, we'll just sort of stand on it like that, so we know. There we go. So it has been wounded. Okay, oh no. Like that. It's just all to cock, isn't it? Let's just do it like that and put it to the side. So we do have a wound on that guard. That is it for Tyra's go. So we've already put it inside. I shouldn't have done that. I should have waited till we finished. So there we go. She has finished her turn and we've managed to get a wound onto the cultist. Right, that's it for Tyra. Next up, Alazabal. And here we are with Alathabal. What is she going to do? Well, she's here on sprint. So she's got four action points in a pool. She's also going to go to charge. So that's one, two. So she's now down to two action points. Which would get her the grand distance of here. Now, ideally, I'd like to get her into here and finish this cultist off. But we used quite a lot of our cards in aiding Tyra. But we do have extra steam. So we're going to try that and see how far along we can get. So we're going to play extra steam. So we've got two action points and we pull two response cards. We're not going to commit anything else. So as soon as this response card start getting turned over, that is it. We can't commit any more cards. So our first one is a plus one so that gives us three action points and our second one is a plus two so we end up with five action points so we're going to go one two three four five so we're going to try and get through the door now that we can't attack unfortunately so that's the end of it because we don't have the range. We only have a range of one or two. So we needed, really we needed like, um, even if we've got a couple of plus twos, we wouldn't have been able to get there. But we have been able to use the move portion. She is in a bit of bother because she can be hit. 
So we might see one of our heroes taking a damage because she is actually in range of this guy at the blowpipe slit, which is unfortunate. Was hoping to get to about here. These guys have only got a range of three, so one, two, three. So if we got here, we would have been out of range. But we've really got to start getting into here. I'm not too bothered about these two guys. I'm sort of hoping that if they get, get some movement, they'll chase us in, and then it'll just be easier for us to fight them from inside here. So that is, that's basically why I've done it as, as I've done it. We do have to get to the exit to win. So let's get a shift on. Okay, so that was it for Alasabao, and that is it for the hero phase. Let's move on to the enemy phase. Here we are at the enemy phase. First things first, let's get rid of those. And get rid of the extra steam card and discard it. And here we are at the enemy phase. So we've got to pull a response card and then we've got to check if we get an eye on it. So here's a response card and it doesn't have an eye and we've got a zero so that is bad oh no it isn't we're fine i thought we were on an attack segment when it's zero on the watchstone we just do whatever is on the watchstone again it's not like the stone of destiny where you have to move you don't have to move on the enemy watchstone what it's on is spawn so we've got to spawn something and yes primary spawn so it's the last of our primary spawn acolytes and it's gonna spawn there again so the acolytes are coming up through the trap doors we managed to get rid of the last one with eliza but now we've got another one which is unfortunate because i would prefer for us to start getting in here Right, so that is it for the enemy phase. We just got a spawn. The threat meter's at one, so we only spawned one acolyte, and that is it. There are no attacks, there is no movement. Hopefully, we'll be able to get into here. I think we'll leave this guy for the time being. He's got quite a long way to go to get to his exit. And if we've got a couple of people in here, especially Eliza, Perhaps if we have Eliza in here, she can always fire out of the door as he goes past. So we could try and do it that way. But I think the important thing for next turn is to get all our heroes in here and to finish this guy off. So he was pretty much stunned by the headbutt that Tyra put on him. So he was unable to move or do anything. And we are being quite swift. I imagine... That the heroes have come in like a whirlwind and these guys are all a bit stunned but as mentioned all we need on that watchstone is a high number if we get say a plus three or a plus two like we did last time then we're getting move and attack so we got pretty lucky that we got a zero there and we just got another spawn okay right so that is it for episode two Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all the subscriptions, for all the views and for all the likes and for all the help and support. As ever, if I've messed up, please let me know and I will try and fix it for next turn. Thank you to everybody who's been across to Board Game Links to upvote the site. And thanks to everybody who's making comments on the videos on BGG and liking them and all that jazz. Thank you very much. So that is it for episode two. I hope you join me for episode three of Perdition's Mouth, Abyssal Rift. But until then, this is me, Cat Weasel, signing off. Toodaloo.